chapter 22. Investment appraisal in the public sector. Contents. 1. Purpose. 2. The nature of investment decisions. 3. Investment appraisal. 4. Methods of investment appraisal. 5. Discussion of the appraisal methods. 6. Profitability index technique. 7. Investment decisions in government. 8. Investment evaluation techniques in government. 9. Life cycle costing. 10. Value analysis and value engineering. 11. Problems of investment appraisal methods. 12. Risks and uncertainty in capital budgeting and investment appraisal. 13. Chapter review. 14. Worked examples. Investment appraisal in the public sector. Purpose. After studying this chapter, the reader should be able to A. Discuss the nature of investment decisions and B. Identify and explain the various methods of investment appraisal in the public sector. The nature of investment decisions. Resources have to be committed today to achieve gains tomorrow. Though it is easy to determine how much will be committed, there is some difficulty in accurately for forecasting the gains from the investment in future. Going into a business therefore involves taking risks. As money becomes available, it has to be put to productive use. A greater part of management effort is therefore in taking investment decisions. The balance sheet merely shows the result of, not the causes or reasons for, undertaking an investment. Investment appraisal. Investment appraisal is a technique directed at finding out the least possible cost of an investment and the maximum economic benefits which may accrue from the commitment of resources into it. Methods of investment appraisal There are many techniques available for the appraisal exercises, which can be classified into discounted cash flow, DCF, non-discounted cash flow, NDCF, and investment decisions in government. Cost-benefit analysis, cost-effectiveness analysis. These are further classified as follows. A. Accounting rate of return, ARR. B. Payback period, PBP. C. Discounted cash flow, DCF. I. Net present value. 2. Internal rate of return. D. Profitability index, PI. E. Cost benefit analysis. F. Cost effectiveness analysis, G. Life cycle costing, H. Value analysis of value engineering. Discussion of the appraisal methods. The appraisal methods are discussed as follows 1. Accounting rate of return. This is the return on initial outlay or return on average capital. It is computed using the formula. ARR equals to average annual accounting profit divided by average investment. Where average investment is initial investment plus residual value divided by 2. Profit is the accounting profit. To get this, we will take income and deduct all necessary expenses incurred in any the revenue in using the accounting rate of return as an investment appraisal method the decision rule is to pick the option which gives the highest rate of return advantages of arr method this may be stated as follows a it consider the profits of a project throughout throughout its useful life b it is simple to calculate and understand. C. It facilitates expenditure flow up 
due to more readily available data on accounting records. Disadvantages of ARR. The following are the disadvantages associated with the use of the method. A. It does not take into account the time value of money. B. It ignores the fact that profits from different projects may accrue at any uneven rate. C. It fails to cater for risks and uncertainties. Payback period method. The, pay, the method focuses on the time taken by an investment to recoup the amount of money put into it. The shorter the payback period, the more preferable the project is. A project will be undertaken only if the payback period is shorter or at worst equal to the maximum set standard period. For a single project, the payback period is compared with a set standard. For mutually exclusive projects, they are ranked and the one with the shortest payoff time is selected. Advantages of payback period method. The following are the advantages of payback period. A. It is useful it is a useful measure of liquidity since the method ensures the selection of projects that provide the hope of immediate cash recoupment. B. It may be used as a safeguard against risks, particularly if the latter increases as payback period lengthens. C. It is simple to calculate and understand. D. The method is popular with public project evaluation where liquidity predominates over profitability. E. It serves as a useful screen to evaluate all projects. F. The approach uses cash flows rather than accounting profits to appraise. Disadvantages of the payback period. These are highlighted as follows. A. It does not consider the time value of money. B. It ignores variations in the timing of cash inflows within the payback period. C. Cash inflows outside the payback period are ignored. D. It does not take into consideration risks and uncertainties. Discounted cash flow DCF criteria. There are two discounted cash flow methods of project appraiser, namely net present value and inter an internal rate of return, which are discussed below. Net present value, NPV. This method refers to the equivalence in present value terms of the cash inflows and outflows from a project when discounted at a particular or given cost of capital. The appropriate discount rate chosen is once firms or corporation's opportunity cost of capital, which is equal to the required rate of return. The decision criterion is that a project is acceptable if it has a positive MPV and rejected if it has a negative MPV. In total, the present value of cash inflows should be greater than, than that of cash outflows. The positive nature of the net of the net present value presupposes the potential increase in consumption made possible by the investment valued in present day terms. For mutually exclusive projects, they would be ranked. The one with the highest net present value is selected. The formula for the computation of the net present of value is NPV equals to C1 over 1 plus K plus C2 over 1 plus K, K square plus C3 over 1 plus K raised to power 3 plus CN over 1 plus K raised to power N minus CO. We see series represents cash inflows. K, the opportunity cost of capital, 
CO is the initial cost of the investment and N, the project's expected life. Advantages of net present value, NPV. The advantages associated with the use of net present value are A. Timing of cash inflows is considered. B. Cash flows on the entire life of the project are taken into consideration. Disadvantages of net present value, NPV. However, the following disadvantages can be identified. A. There is the obligation for management to determine the appropriate cost of capital to use. B. It is not suitable where capital rationing situation exists. C. This is the assumption, there is the assumption that the cash inflows will come as predicted, which may not necessarily be so. Internal rate of return, IRR. The approach is also known as discounted cash flow yield. The internal rate of return is the discount rate, which when applied gives zero net present value. It can be found by either drawing a present value profile or graph or mathematically true linear interpolation using the formula stated thus R1 plus P open bracket R2 minus R1 close bracket divided by P plus N where R1 is positive rate R2 is negative rate P is positive net present value NPV N is negative net present value NPV in using the internal rate of return model the decision rule is to accept the project appraised where the calculated rate is greater than the company's cost of capital the project with the highest percentage of internal rate of return is picked where two or more mutually exclusive investments are being considered. Profitability index technique. This is another investment appraisal technique which compares the present value of cash inflows, the present value of cash inflows with the present value of cash outflows in ratio terms. The formula is given as P1 equals to present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outlay or P1 equals to net present value of cash inflows divided by present value of cash outflow outlay. The decision rule in profitability index is to accept every project whose P1 is greater than 1 using 1 above and whose P1 is positive using 2 above. Accept project if P1 is equal to 1 or greater than 1. Reject project if P1 is equal to 0 or less than. Advantages of profitability index A. It recognizes time value of money. B. It is a variant of the net present value method it is therefore it therefore requires the same computation as in mpv method c it is a relative measure of the project's profitability since the present value of cash inflows is divided by the present value of cash outflows d it is generally consistent with the wealth maximization principle Disadvantages of profitability index A. It can only be used to choose projects under simple one period capital constraint situation. B. It does not work mutually exclusive projects or dependent projects are being considered. C. The technique is not popular in public sector projects. Investment decisions in government. Investment is a judicial utilization of resources and variable for opportunities. It is due to any reasonable returns beneficial to the providers of funds or finance. Investment of government may be financed through A. 
capitally generated revenue and statutory allocations. B. Funds raised through the capital and money markets. Investment decisions are taken after the feasibility and viability of projects have been considered. Not only the financial benefit, but also the societal advantages which accrue from embarking upon the specified projects will be considered. Investment decision making in any organization is managerial in nature. It focuses on goals. An investment decision addresses choice, and for the latter to qualify as well as such, there must be a commitment to apply resources. The choice invariably turns out to be an investment. According to management literature, there are two types of decisions, namely a non-programmable decision. This is the strategic in nature. It deals with critical issues such as how to allocate resources and managing community relations in the face of capital rationing. An unprogrammed decision is long term. It is made for organizational survival. B. Programmable decision. This is a tactical or short term decision. It is concerned with preferring a solution to a routine problem determined by rules and conventions. A programmed decision is used for uncomplicated issues. By its nature, it limits freedom or initiatives as the organization decides what is to be done. Although investments are undertaken in the public sector organizations, just as in the private sector, Operating environments and the goals pursued are different. While non profitable projects may be dropped in the private sector, it may be unreasonable to act in this way in the public sector for political, social economic, historical, and security reasons. Investment evaluation techniques in government. There are many investment evaluation techniques used in government ministries, extra ministerial departments, and agencies. They are discussed as follows. 1. Cost-Benefit Analysis Cost-Benefit Analysis is defined as an analytical tool in decision-making, which enables a systematic comparison to be made between the estimated cost of undertaking a project and the estimated value of benefits, which may be obtained from its execution. Cost-Benefit Analysis is the most popular technique used for project evaluation in the public sector. The technique seeks as a minimum the point of equilibrium between cost and benefits of a proposed project initiated by either the government or demanded by the populace. It is applied in such areas as transportation, postal services, communication projects, educational projects, and road construction. Where it is difficult to estimate the benefits of a project, shadow prices are used. A shadow price is the measure of the maximum contribution for gone in consequences of the failure to obtain one additional unit of limited capacity in a defined situation. Cost-benefit analysis can be used in the allocation of resources among the three tiers of government. The research and study into the cost-benefit analysis came into prominence in the early 1960s though it was applied in the USA in the 1930s and UK in the 1950s. The development of cost-benefit analysis has not only brought about enhanced project appraisal in the public sector, but also assisted in investment planning, commercial policy, and the development of policy evaluations. It considers the following. A. Externalities which may be either positive or negative. An externality is the consequences of an action not taken into consideration when making a decision, but which has direct or indirect effect on the communities, towns, or society at large. An externality can be beneficial, open bracket, that is positive, as well as harmful, that is negative. An externality represents the cost or benefits to the third parties. B. Income redistribution in the society. It is a technique which aims at assisting decision makers 
by identifying and measuring the social and other costs and advantages which may accrue. It measures the social costs and benefits of a plan by translating them into monetary values. It quantifies the economic intangibles by assessing the effects of actions taken not only on the decision maker but also on the society as a whole. Procedures for conducting cost-benefit analysis. The steps involved in carrying out a cost-benefit analysis are as follows. A. Examining the problem with the proper definition of the objectives of the analysis in focus. B. Consider alternative causes of actions which would achieve the defined objectives in A above. C. Enumerate the costs involved and the benefits which would accrue from the particular causes of action to the establishment and the society. D. Evaluate the costs and benefits. E. Draw conclusions as to the economic and social effects of a particular choice. F. Re-examine the problem and choosing objectives to determine ac accomplishment. Cost benefit analysis and commercial investment appraisal. Consideration of the procedures above may indicate that cost benefit analysis is synonymous with commercial investment appraisal techniques, thereby suggesting that they may be used interchangeably. Deep examination of the procedures involved, however, will clearly highlight the areas of similarities and dissimilarities of the two approaches. Similarities between cost-benefit analysis and commercial investment appraisal methods. The areas of similarities are A. They adopt a common approach in basic model formulation. B. Consideration of the effective allocation of costs and benefits to periods in which they occur is the same. C. They both focus on the justification of present investment cost in terms of its future return. D. They apply discounting techniques which take time value of money into consideration. E. They apply decision rules for selecting investments. The similarities between cost-benefit analysis and commercial investment appraisal methods. A. The application of cost-benefit analysis focuses more on the macroeconomy and the attendant benefits while commercial investment appraiser address evaluation on micro perspective level. B. The cost benefit analysis considers all factors, including the cost of harms done to the environment, unhealthy competition, the effect on the workforce, etc. The only cost relevant in commercial appraiser is that falling directly on the enterprise. C. On the principle of preparedness to pay, cost-benefit analysis adopts wider definition to include what can be over or below the commercial price. On the other hand, commercial appraiser considers only the effective demand, that is, buying more at lower price or less at high, higher price. Cost-benefit analysis and project evaluation. The following methods are adopted in the evaluation of projects under cost-benefit analysis. A. Benefit or cost comparison. This method compares estimated benefits and cost of projects to be taken. The decision criterion is that if benefits are greater than the cost of a project, it should be accepted for implementation, otherwise it should be rejected. The major weaknesses of this method are 1. It agree, I ignores the effect of inflation on values used in the computation. 2. The figures and other details used are not relative. B. Benefit or cost ratio. This method assesses estimated benefit as a ratio of estimated cost. The decision is that if the ratio is greater than 1, the project should be accepted. Otherwise, it should be rejected. Advantages of the benefit or cost ratio. 1. It produces comparable results. 2. The benefit or cost used in the calculations are discounted. 
disadvantages of the method. The method ignores the time value of money as in, the, as in benefit or cost comparison approach. C. Merits and dismerits of cost-benefit analysis. Merits of the technique. The advantages of the approach are as follows. 1. It takes into consideration monopolistic power of government over vital public projects. 2. It considers not only financial commitments on a project, but also favorable and unfavorable impacts of the project on the society. Non-consideration of these impacts may jeopardize the lofty goals of the project despite the size of finance committed. 3. Cost-benefit analysis is a viable option for project appraisal in government, bearing in mind its service rendering goal. 4. The appraisal technique serves as a check on the excesses of political decisions, which most of the time ignore economic and social costs and benefits of a project on the society. 5. It is easy to apply. The merit of the approach. This may be appreciated as follows. 1. The similar projects are not, most of the time, evaluated and considered together, e.g., cost benefit of constructing a road and school will not be considered, but only similar items. 2. Financial selection may be based on unjustifiable factors, e.g., political, social, geographical, and historical factors. 3. It requires comprehensive and intelligent data collection and analysis for which the public sector is noted to be deficient. 4. Indirect user benefits. Alternative methods of valuing benefits yield different outcomes. Given the different approaches, there is difficulty in choosing an appropriate monetary measure. One has to contend, therefore, with the problem of whether or not to use the technique as a means of investment appraisal. 5. Spill over effects. There is the necessity to distinguish between technological and pecuniary spillovers. The decision maker faces the problem of how to include these effects in the analysis. Spillover is a situation where an action or project has a lot of indirect benefits. For example, a raw material supplier may install a modern and efficient machinery for production. Apart from the availability of cheap raw materials, other benefits derivable may include standardized quality, and timely supply always. Six, double counting. A difficult problem to address is double counting. This is a situation in which the cost may be accounted for twice in view of the process complication. For example, the cost may be taken into account as raw material and later as finished product. Seven, rate of interest chosen for discounting. The problem here is the ability to determine the appropriate interest rate to apply for discounting future costs and benefits. The market rate and the social rate have to be considered. Social rate of interest is that fixed is that fixed for some other reasons such as connection. It is, the lower, it is lower than the market rate and may be fixed for a group of individuals. The market rate is for the supply and demand of money in the money market. It is the commercial rate which reflects the worth of money. 8. Uncertainty The problem is how to reach decisions in situations where trend analysis afford little or no guidance for the future. Situations of uncertainties, unlike risks, do not offer themselves for mathematical manipulation. 9. Evaluating the distributional effects. The idea of formal cost-benefit analysis does not distinguish between benefits received by different individuals or group of people. It does not take position with regards to who benefits and who bears the cost. 
there's a misgiving that prevailing fashions and human behavior may blur the interpretation of the distribution effects. Then, subjectivity. Subjectivity. Measuring costs and benefits may involve using subjective indices to draw conclusions. Cost effectiveness analysis, CEA. The cost effectiveness analysis, CEA, is an approach to picking among alternative lines of action in public sector organizations in regard to their effectiveness in attaining specified objectives. The approach identifies either the least cost method of realizing an objective or the maximum output attainable at a given cost. In contrast to cost-benefit analysis, CBA, the focus is on cost and not so much on the benefit. Cost-effectiveness analysis does not attempt to supply information on the benefits of achieving goals. Rather, the emphasis is on the least or minimal cost of achieving the specified objective of a public sector project. Procedure of cost effectiveness analysis in the appraisal of a public project. These are A. Objective definition is to determine what actual target is. What are the projects? B. Sourcing and assessment of alternatives. After the public project has been determined, what are the cost alternatives that are available? The information in this regard have to be collated. C. Selection of measure to be adopted. It has to be determined what type of approaches we enable management to achieve the set goals, objectives, without a reasonable period of time, within a reasonable period of time. D. Development of cost estimates. Cost estimates have to be collated, addressing the issues of what to include and how to measure them. E. Having ascertained the adequacy of cost effectiveness measures and relying on the information on cost estimates, the public sector organization evolves the financial decision based on the principle of least cost limitations of cost effectiveness analysis. A. Procedures are subjective since they are based on the personal judgment of the decision maker. B. What is an appropriate measure of effectiveness cannot be easily resolved. C. It may lead to wrong decisions resulting from imperfect information on which costs are based and benefits derived. Life cycle costing. This is a costing approach which attempts, which attempts to optimize the use of cost by aggregating the entire original and operation cost of assets over their estimated lives. It is used for evaluating the desirability of acquiring an asset in preference to others based on cost minimization. The concept adopts the discounting technique as to evaluate assets. Life cycle costing is the financial arm of therotechnology. The, commit the Committee for Therotechnology defines therotechnology as the combination of management, financial, engineering, and other practices applied to physical assets in pursuit of economic ends. The pursuit of economic objectives demands that a company's objective should be to reduce as much as possible the total life cycle cost in maintaining physical assets during their economic lifespan. In life cycle costing, consideration is given to the following factors. A. Original cost of physical assets, including the cost of design, specification, 
acquisition and installation b operating costs which include those of labor materials and energy c maintenance costs relating to materials and labor d lost profits and cost of recovering lost profits e disposal value this is the residual value less disposal cost incurred the annual equivalent cost of a physical asset is computed using the formula purchase cost divided by cumulative pv factor Van value analysis or value engineering value engineering aims at trying to reduce cost and prevent any unnecessary cost before the product or service is produced it endeavors to eliminate any cost which will not contribute to the value and performance of the project or service value analysis is the same process when it is aimed at cost reduction after the product or service has been introduced value engineering involves innovative and critical thinking it uses a formal procedure which examines the purpose of the project or service, its basic functions and its secondary functions. Problems of investment appraisal methods. Some of the problems have been identified thus. A. Future events are difficult to forecast with complete accuracy. B. Investment decisions are sometimes determined by political factors. C. The choice of an appropriate investment appraisal method is subjective. D. The calculation of the cost of capital to be used is a matter of opinion. There is nothing sacrosanct about any decision. E. The treatment and measurement of risks are not easy tasks. Risks and uncertainty in capital budgeting or investment appraisal. Risk is the quantification or measurement of the extent to which actual cash inflows will vary from the forecast earnings. Such risks, which abound in business, lives in business lives include inflation, drop in market demand, and changes in government policies. The probability of occurrence of such a risk is between zero and one. Uncertainty, however, is a confused state. Under uncertainty, any development can take place. The business development is so unpredictable that no prob probability of occurrence can be assigned using the probability concept to measure risk. All the appraisal methods discussed so far assume that the cash inflows forecast the cash inflow forecast will be realized as predicted. This is a situation of, of certainty which hardly exists in the dynamic world, especially of business, and which is therefore unattainable. In order to provide for the presence of risks, the decision maker will assign reasonable and scientific probability considerations to the forecast on certain cash inflows. The expected values obtained are then used for the appraisal of the investment under review. Chapter Review It is essential for an organization, whether public or private sector, to make investment decisions where the establishment is faced with different alternatives using different techniques of investment appraisal. In practical life, there are challenges in making choices. Nonetheless, decisions have to be made by organizations. In the public sector, tools such as cost-benefit analysis and cost-effectiveness analysis. The former tools enables a comparison to be made between the estimated cost of undertaking a project and estimated value of the benefits, which will accrue from its execution. Cost-effectiveness analysis is used in choosing among alternative courses of action.